This is where I'm born, and this is where my roots are. Also, the community is a very special community. We have so many characters that come through the doors. Friday night, Shabbos, Yom Tovim. They really embellish the ambiance in the shul. And uh, we take pride in welcoming all guests to our shul. And we hope by welcoming guests, they become regulars to this small but vibrant community. The shul was established in 1921, approximately, because it's all different dates when it was actually um, established. But it, in actual fact, the, the previous building, which was based in Lukin Street, which is across the road, was established in 1903. This building was basically a bootmaker, a converted bootmaker's place, two houses put together, which um, has really stood as the test of time, and you can see the way it's being renewed and um, the way it's being brought back to its former glory. It, it's a living being in the sense that it's somewhere I equate to quite regularly, not only during Shabbos, Sunday, and uh, the High Holy Days, but during most of the week, as I'm quite often in this place. This was the cradle of Judaism, the East End, in the 1880s onwards, but it suffered quite a few declines um, through the people passing on into the leafier parts of London, but there is always the heart and soul, which I will firmly um, contend is still here. We still have 2,000 Jews in the East End. And for me, this is my mission to get these people, a percentage of them, into the shul so they learn a little bit more about Judaism, a little bit about their own background, and also how we can bring them and integrate them into this shul that, please God, will flourish for many, many more years. I like to take services, but I also like to share the services. We have people that are gifted, that have come and helped me from nowhere. We've got um, also uh, people that come from Stanford Hill that help me regularly. So we do have this injection of different people coming into the shul of a Shabbat. And that makes the service more interesting. If a shul is just one person, it becomes boring. It becomes boring for that person and for the kehilla. But when you've got people that have got different ways of davening, different ways of looking at things, then it's beautiful. It's a community, it's not one person. When you walk through the doors, you can see the way the light emanates and shines through from the roof light. It's so beautiful that um, when you're davening, you fill at one with God when the light shines through. And that is the most beautiful feature of this synagogue, which is a folk art synagogue, um, which is very similar to the urban space synagogues of Eastern Europe. What do you feel when you're up on the Bimmer leading the service? I tend to forget where I am, in the best sense of the word. I get elevated, and I was in the Nia, in the sense that I feel spiritually uplifted. I feel that um, I'm connecting with God, and especially when uh, we get a minion, the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence comes down, and we're uplifted. And that gives me a real high for whenever I'm taking a service. <laughs> Uh, there was a, there's a lady here that she told me she's going to San Francisco shortly. So I'm going to sing I Left My Heart in San Francisco, followed by Love is a Many Splendor Thing. The loveliness of Paris seems so sad and gay. The glory that was Rome is just another day. I'm terribly alone in Manhattan. I'm going home.
to my city by the bay. I left my heart in San Francisco High on a hill it calls to me To be where little cable cars Climb halfway to the stars The morning fire may chill the air I don't care Can it be the frame that fills Brick Lane with rare and magic perfume? Oh no, it isn't the frame, it's salt beef and blooms. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> but they, they put it to music. Children.